So today we're going to be talking about the future of graded trading cards and specifically how artificial intelligence may pose a huge gain in effectiveness to the way that cards are graded but also pose a huge risk in that it may be biased towards certain cards or just ineffective as a grading strategy. But before we get into it, let's roll that intro. <laughs> Hey Gengar gang, what is going on? My name is Ryan, this is the Analytic Gengar, and welcome to another video. In today's video, friends, we're talking about graded trading cards, and specifically artificial intelligence that is being used to grade trading cards. Now, a few weeks ago, I purchased some cards from a company called AGS, and as you can see, they are pretty neat, but the most important part, and the quote-unquote gimmick behind this particular grading company, is that they claim that their graded trading cards are graded using an artificial artificial intelligence that grades the cards and renders a grade based on some algorithm of some sort. So what's interesting is that I immediately got curious about what kind of artificial intelligence could possibly be used in order to grade trading cards and I started doing some research. So in today's video, I'll explain how the algorithms and the artificial intelligence that are used for grading trading cards could potentially be a gigantic leap forward in general standards for grading trading cards. But I can also tell you that there are going to be some huge hurdles to the way that uh, graded trading cards advance through being graded via artificial intelligence and an algorithm. Now, in order to get started, let's go ahead and say that, hey, if you like today's content, don't forget to leave a like and hey, I mean, you're already here. Might as well hit that little subscribe button to join the Gengar gang. It's the easiest way to support the channel and make sure that this video and other videos get out to more people and get more traction. Um, other than that, links to the articles in today's video will be shown down below. And yeah, let's jump right on into it. So first things first, uh, here's the graded card that I bought online. It's a um, Celebi EX. I also got a Dark Magician Girl Ghost Rare from Ghosts of the Past too. So um, where did I buy them from? eBay. Uh, who are they graded by? Automated Grading Systems or AGS. Now here we have AGS's website and what they claim to be able to do is use robo grading artificial intelligence to grade sports cards, Pokemon, MetaZoo, Yu Gi Oh!, Dragon Ball Z, Super Dragon Ball Heroes, and Akora, interestingly enough. And you can see here on their lovely website that there is uh, some type of scanning that goes on, and then the artificial intelligence runs through the card's image and then renders a grade based on that. Apparently, there are over 15,000 cards already graded, and, um, yeah, you get some pretty, pretty, pretty neat stuff going on right now. Um, you can see here that, you know, they have the slabs and then, yeah, there's tons of really cool stuff. Now, um, why switch to robo grading? Well, uh, here are some of the insights that AGS would at least like you to know. Uh, you can feel safer buying and selling robo graded cards because the cards are graded consistently and are therefore more reliable. It doesn't change if you grade it twice or the grader is having a bad day. The AI reads it consistently every single time. So perhaps we should start by asking what is artificial intelligence? Um, well, an artificial intelligence program is really nothing special. Um, in terms of what you've been told or think it might be versus what it actually is. Uh, artificial intelligence systems really work based on an algorithm. And the algorithm will run through a series of very complex decisions that computers are very good at rooting through very quickly. So the trick is, is that while the human brain may take, you know, several significant steps in order to make one decision after another, computers are very good at making decisions in sequence and then rendering an outcome based on that. And that's basically how artificial intelligence works through algorithms. Um, algorithms basically have a set of training data that they are usually trained on and that's how they learn to make decisions. So for example, um, an artificial intelligence program may be shown several pictures of PSA 10s, PSA 9s, PSA 8s, BGS, 
nines, tens, and eights, CGC, etc., etc. And then the algorithm will learn basically what a 10 looks like according to BGS or CGC or PSA, and then it will create effectively an average and it'll say, okay, based on all of the different data that I have taken in, here is what a average 10 looks like. And that is likely what a AGS 10 it is. It is kind of an amalgamation of a variety of different 10s that AGS has been able to train the algorithm off of. Now comes the second part, um, get unbiased and fair grades. So to the robot, your card is just a variation of pixels and it doesn't care who you are. It learns from expert graders and applies it to all. And because the scans are available in the public domain, there's just no way to cheat it. AI card grading is the way to go. So let's break that down a little bit. In the past, there have been accusations made that depending on the person or the um, anonymity of a particular card, it can influence graders to grade higher, better, worse, etc. So there was an argument made that um, you probably want to pay for the quote unquote highest service you possibly can because that's how you can slightly influence the graders to take the grading of the card more seriously. Obviously, if you're going to pay PSA $2,000 to grade a card, yeah, sure, they might throw you the 10, right? However, the argument here is that for AGS, um, any card you submit, whether it be under their most severe tier or their lowest tier, doesn't matter. It's going to get graded the same way because it's the artificial intelligence that's rendering the grading. Um, Additionally, it learns from those expert graders, right? So that exact example that I just walked us through where the algorithm is given a set of training data, which is probably just scans of every PSA 10, BGS 10, et cetera, et cetera, that these guys can get their hands on. That's how they train the algorithm to decide how to grade these trading cards. Um, and those averages are what influences that. And then that same exact set of data and that same exact algorithm is what they are claiming is delivered to each and every single trading card that comes through their um, workflow. And so it doesn't matter who you are, how much you paid, doesn't matter. It's the same algorithm grading it at the end of the day and it's going to be unbiased and fair. Now. Um, part of this video will address the claim of unbiased because I believe there is a risk here that some of us may not be considering and so um, that's why I'm very curious to see where robo grading goes and that was kind of why I decided to make this video in brainstorming ideas for it and kind of outlining my thoughts what I realized is that um, because every graded trading card prior to artificial intelligence was graded by a human. There is potentially a risk that any algorithm, regardless of what you end up, you know, um, training it on or how much data you end up giving it, because of the inherent nature of graded trading cards, which is that they are graded by a subjective grader, and that's what this AI is learning off of, theoretically, this algorithm and this AI robo grading contains each and every single one of those people's biases. So that's what's interesting, is that, you know, one particular grader may really like crisp corners, and that may be the, the deal breaker for what gets a 10 versus what gets a nine. And so if that person is inherently biased towards really nice corners on cards, the AI, theoretically, is also biased. Now again, the argument is that because you're going to be looking at a lot of different people and a lot of different graders and a lot of different cards from different companies, hopefully it doesn't really matter because hopefully at the end of the day what ends up happening is the law of averages kinds of kicks in. So where one grader may be super pressed about corners, the other person may not be. And the same thing would, would be true of centering of edges, etc, etc. And as a result, um, you kind of average out any biases, but we'll get into that a teeny tiny bit later. And then uh, the last part is be in control of your hobby. So when you get a nine and a 10 and nine and eight, you know exactly why you have access to the scans and scores. So each card comes with those scores, corners, edges, centering and surface, and no longer does the power lie with the grader, it lies with you. So those are some 
of the uh, statements regarding AGS. Now, I should also note at this point that it has been pointed out to me in the comments on the PSA Mail Day video that I made where I showed off these cards that um, as of right now, uh, there are rumors going around that the... Um, that the artificial intelligence isn't necessarily working so please if you're watching this video don't take this as a enthusiastic endorsement of AGS cards um, they are one of the few companies out there that kind of lay claim and stake to the idea of artificial intelligence that is grading so this is an advertisement for them more so than it is a um, a review of artificial intelligence and how it is being used in graded trading cards. Always, as always, do your research. As many of you know who watch the channel frequently, um, I very rarely, if ever, buy from these smaller grading companies. I would rather PSA, BGS, or CGC. Um, however, I thought it would be interesting to kind of pick one of these cards up and that's what inspired this video. But do bear in mind, um, I have never graded with these guys, so I am approaching this as an independent third party and not a you know customer reviewing their services. This is really talking about artificial intelligence and how it is being used in grading trading cards. To that point, um, interestingly enough, I was able to find a, a very interesting website from recruitability.ai um, where they basically talk about how artificial intelligence is being used in trading cards. And again, AGS is one example, but um, something that I thought was also interesting is that our friends in PSA have also, according to this article, been investing in and acquired um, a artificial intelligence grading company. So Collectors Universe, the parent company of PSA, announced that it had purchased Genement, an AI company, uh, built to be used as fingerprint on cards for its unique marks and then grade it. So what's interesting is that the AI can effectively read the card pixel by pixel, um, detect if it was tampered with, which I think is a really powerful tool that up till now AGS has not made a point of at least, at least on the page we were just looking at, and then finally but not least grade the card as well. So just another example of how artificial intelligence is being used slowly but surely and getting integrated into the graded trading card market because it is an area rife with opportunity um it's just that there is you know certain risks and hurdles that any emerging technology will kind of have to face with as it gets integrated into what was otherwise a very manual process in the day. Um, just for example, PSA plans to leverage the technology to rapidly scale its operations. Um, and yeah, they're hoping that they'll still use humans to grade cards, but the AI will assist in the process and approve speed and accuracy. So I really like this too, because maybe the AI would theoretically read the card first and render a grade. The grader would independently come to a grade and then they would see if they match. I know that is a very frequent tactic to use, especially when an, any type of algorithm or decision making uh, computer software is used, which is effectively in some cases what a artificial intelligence would do, right? It's making a decision on what grade the card has based on its condition. Oftentimes, um, they will use a human input in order to basically dictate, hey, yes, this is the right grader. Hey, no, I disagree. Here's my rationale for why I disagree. And something like that may also become what is called a secondary data set. So that data set would um, effectively be used to retrain the algorithm. So not only is the algorithm being trained initially on raw scans of graded trading cards, but then additionally, um, people will have the opportunity to challenge that and check that decision-making process and continually enhance it as time goes on. So that'll also be pretty cool if um, PSA does decide to implement something like that because it does have the ability then to further enhance and refine that algorithm to its ultimate point. Now, in terms of AGS, just super quickly, um, I did find, honestly, in the Pokey Investing uh, Reddit, that um, there were some, you know, comments and chatter on this. Now, to spare everyone the pain of reading through all these comments, it would appear that the general idea um, is that a lot of people don't necessarily quite see it as a 
a big time grading company and so a lot of people advocated immediately hey if it's not PSA BGS or CGC just don't don't involve yourself with it uh, so there was a lot of that commentary going on in there um, you can see that top comment is quite literally that uh, but then some other people were chatting about basically what I'm chatting about today which is that it's actually really cool that they're integrating some technology or at least claiming to integrate some technology and if they are able to prove that out more and more with time um, it could give them a great opportunity to really do something special within the trading card uh, grading space. Now, finally but not least, um, was that idea about bias, and that's what I really kind of wanted to just briefly touch on here. So, uh, this is a article from NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, here in the United States, and they put out this really cool article back earlier in this year that I thought was very incredibly relevant to today's conversation. Now, the uh, article is titled "There's More to AI Bias Than Bias Data." And I think that's exactly what we kind of face if grading companies want to integrate AI into their grading process. So without getting too into the weeds on this, um, bias can happen in artificial intelligence because it's a it's relatively common knowledge for those uh, with, the, with, with the context that AI systems can exhibit biases that stem from their programming or data sources. So just as an example, because you only train the algorithm on PSA cards, it doesn't necessarily have a good understanding of what a BGS 10 looks like or what a CGC 10 looks like. Um, and as a result, it's biased towards PSA, which means it's going to behave and grade more like a human PSA grader. And the same is true of the opposite. If you only train it on one of these basement company type graded trading cards and only sort of show it data from that area, it's not going to behave like quote unquote, the big three grading companies treat their cards. So. Interestingly enough, um, that is one of the flat out most simple things, right? And that is the sort of statistical or computational biases that NIST claims that we have that kind of sit at the very top of the iceberg. However, the other really interesting um, tidbit that I thought was very relevant are the systemic and the human biases. What does that mean? Well, um, the human biases are effectively just the humans. And in, in, in the context of this article, it means a lot because obviously there's, you know, a programmer who writes the AI and he or she or they could be biased towards a particular group, a particular um, style of decision making, and that can kind of influence how the AI behaves as well. And at a point when you trust the AI to start making too many decisions and it's biased, it's going to behave like the person who was biased when they programmed it. Similarly, um, we have the instance of too many graders. So if you don't show the AI enough graders, what's going to end up happening is it's going to behave like the small sample population you showed it. But that might not necessarily be fair because if you can identify a particular grader, you might say, hey, that particular grader is very tough on edges, on corners, or might be too lenient on certain areas of cards. The only part of a graded trading card that is genuinely unbiased and is completely objective is going to be centering because centering as I've covered in this video is something that is 100% mathematically objective it either is or it is not 50 50 and then a grading company would just specify hey as long as it falls within this bracket you're gonna get a 10 a 9 and 8 however each and every single one of the other aspects whether it be edges corners um, or surface or hollow they're all rel relatively subjective because if you think about it, what one person identifies as a huge deal might be a small deal to another individual. And so that's where the human biases within AI can really kind of pose a threat to the future of AI as a technology within grading trading cards. Because ideally, what you're going to want to do is give it so much data, such a vast amount of data, that the law of averages effectively corrects for any biases that may exist. And that even then, you might just have to accept that 
because we are subjective, uh, rather, we are objectively relying on subjective grading in order to train the AI to get it off the ground, you're just going to have to accept that there's a risk that it's biased towards one of the different elements of grading trading cards other than centering. Um, and then, of course, there are systemic biases. So the systemic biases would be something like, hey, PSA is a lot less tough on cards than CGC and BGS. Well, what does that mean for your algorithm? Does that mean that you tell the algorithm, hey, don't take PSA really that seriously because occasionally they don't get it wrong? or because black labels and gold labels from BGS and CGC respectively are often viewed as quote unquote perfect trading cards, do you weight PSA and CGC cards differently because of that? Because you know that a PSA 10 and a CGC 10 can mean different things based on the subgrades available with one grading company and the fact that PSA just renders a flat out grade without any kind of indication what the subgrades could have been. So those systemic biases may also play a huge role in how much you weight certain things for the algorithm to consider and how it then processes that information and makes that final decision. So those are some of the things to think about. But I do genuinely believe that I think PSA, or at least what was reported here, is a good path forward. I think the idea is, yeah, let the AI read, let the AI train, let the date, let the AI get exposure to grading trading cards, because that's genuinely one of the only ways it will learn um, and it will continue to get better. From there, it's really about checking and challenging using human experience, because the better you can train the AI, the better off it will be. And frankly, I personally think, uh, hint, hint, this is Ryan's money-making tip of the week. If you really wanted to um, revolutionize the graded trading card space, it would probably be um, reaching out to different graders from different people, getting their opinion, and then creating an AI um, that effectively is basically Genement or the one that's backing AGS, and then letting a bunch of people contribute to the feedback loop. So as the AI renders decisions, use a bunch of different graders from different companies with different amounts of experience and different philosophies in order to check and challenge the AI and continue to iterate through it. As a result of that, there's a better chance that you'll be able to create an AI that is effectively as unbiased as can possibly be, given that we're using subjective data to train this AI to begin with. And then after that, it's really just about using the AI to benefit the hobby as a whole. But with all that said, friends, thanks again for checking out another video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, as always, don't forget to leave a like and hey, you're already here. Hit the subscribe button, support the channel, join the Gengar gang, and welcome to our happy little community. Other than that, let me know your thoughts down below. Be civil. Like I said, AGS, this is not an advertisement for them, so please please don't yell at me in the comments. Thanks. Um, and yeah, other than that, let me know your thoughts. Happy to discuss down below. But other than that, thanks again for checking out another video, friends, and we will talk soon. Peace. <laughs>